Depreciation is important to businesses as they complete their taxes so that the total cost of buying a piece of equipment does not fall into just one year, but some of the costs are spread out over the life of the piece of equipment. One model that can be used for depreciation is linear depreciation, and we're going to look at that model now because we're looking at lines. And our goal in these problems will be to find the actual model, and once we have a model, we can use then that equation to calculate calculate the depreciated value for any particular year that we're looking at since we purchased that piece of equipment. So let's take a look at an example. An ultrasound machine was purchased for $224,000 and has a depreciated value of $100,000 after eight years. If the value has depreciated linearly, find the model and the depreciated value after 10 years. So what we want to do with this problem is again look for ordered pairs of information. So we want to think about what two quantities would be involved. So as we think about the quantities that would be involved in this problem, we know that there is time because we're looking at years after so many years. Um, and time is almost always independent, so we're going to let that be the x. Once we know the time, we can calculate the value. And so our y value is going to, or our y's are going to stand for the value of this piece of machinery. Now I want to look for ordered pairs, because ordered pairs can help me to find a line. So my first ordered pair is that when time is zero, when the equipment is brand new, it has a value of $224,000. And I almost always use this combination of the purchase price when time is zero. I also am given that when time is eight years later, so after eight years, this piece of equipment has a value of $100,000. And once I have two ordered pairs, I'm ready to find slope. So m equals, and I take my y2, so 100,000 minus my y1, 224,000. And divide that by my x2 minus x1. And again, I went ahead and did these on my calculator before. Um, I'm writing it down for you, so calculating that gives me a value of negative 15,500. And I'm glad to see the negative there because that confirms what I'm doing in my head. The value is going down, so the rate of change the should be negative, should decrease here. So again, an equation y equals mx plus b. We now know m, we just figured it out, and I need an ordered pair to help me find b. I'm going to use this first ordered pair right here. So my y value is 224,000 equals m, negative 15,500. My x value is 0, which turns out to be super convenient, and plus b. Now I know anything times 0 is just 0, so this whole part is 0, and that allows me to solve real easily that 224,000 is my b value. And again, that follows intuition. b is when time is 0, that would be on the y-axis, and b is the y-intercept, so I sort of knew that from this ordered pair before I did the math. Now I can write my equation, and so I have y equals negative 15,500 x plus 224,000. And an equation is a model. So I've answered one part of the problem. I've found a model. Now the second part is actually the easy part then because I have the model. And so it asks me what is the depreciated value after 10 years. Well we said right over here that that would be an x value because x is representing time. So I just use my model. So I have y equals negative 15,500 times my x of 10 plus, I don't know if I can squeeze this on, 224 
and again put all that into my calculator just as it is and it gives me my answer so the depreciated value of Y is going to be $69,000 in 10 years. And so just like that we've used algebra, we used an equation to model the depreciation. The company would then use this model year after year um, as long as they kept the equipment for tax purposes to know the value of that piece of machinery as far as an asset, as far as what their financial loss was um, for each year. So a really cool place to use a little bit of algebra to help us in business.